And Harold Van der Linde of uh, HSBC is joining us. He's head of Asia Equity Strategy. Harold, great to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Are we uh, at the cusp of a bit of a, a global pullback? After many months, uh, we are looking like we are getting one. Month to date, the Nasdaq is down 6.5%. The S&P is down about 55 uh, And uh, here in India... You know, some indices are down just about three, three and a half odd percent from their respective highs. Uh, what's your sense, Harold? Yeah, so we have a bit of a pullback. I'm not really overly worried about this pullback, to be extremely frank, uh, at, at the moment. So what is going on? There's two, I think there's two things going on. Uh, uh, actually, you said it very nicely uh, a couple of minutes ago. Um, uh, things are so good that it's bad. The U.S. is strong. Demand is strong. Inflation remains high. And the Fed has indicated quite recently that they... They, they are willing to do more. And the market said, oh, there's a possibility maybe that they're going to raise interest rates again, and therefore bond yields are moving higher. Money gets therefore sucked into uh, into the U.S., uh, and in particular in, um, in, in say, deposits, money market uh, stuff, and that, and that lowers the markets. That's happening at the moment. Uh, but two things I'd like to say. First of all, since the beginning of the year, a lot of people have been called out by the rally that we've seen over the last couple of months. Uh, were, were all kinds of excuses not to participate in equity since the beginning of the year. There was a banking crisis supposedly happening in the US. There was a debt ceiling issue. All sorts of other things happened. Um, then China, of course, the, the, the reopening there that was a bit of a disappointment. So I think a lot of people have been caught out by the rally that we saw the last couple of months. What might well happen now is that as the markets come back, that those people actually say, okay, this is an opportunity for me to come back into, into equities, in particular US equities. So that's that's the first thing. Secondly, um, yes, inflation is moving maybe a bit higher and oil prices are going higher and bond yields are going higher. However, I found it difficult to believe that this will continue. We are trying to time the peak of the US interest rate cycle. Um, in the next, say, 12 months or so, it is most likely, more than uh, likely, that inflation is going to trend lower. And that's not just me saying it or about 100 other economists. It's even the Fed itself believing that's going to take place. If you look at their own dot plot forecast, it shows that inflation and therefore bond yields and interest rates are moving lower into 2024, and the market will participate that. So I think that will eventually happen, and that will allow equity markets to bounce back again. Now, when that's going to happen, you have to see that's, yeah. that could well happen over the course of the next two, three, four weeks, or maybe that goes into October or something like that. But I suspect this is going to happen. So I'm, I'm not overly worried about the pullback that we see at the moment. Okay, not worried about the pullback in the global markets, uh, markets like the US, right? Harold, good morning. Uh, in the month of July, you wrote a report where you said that, uh, you know, investors should stay the course in a market like China, despite all the bad news over there and the soft economic data. And you spoke about how you like sectors like electric vehicles, uh, real estate, state-owned companies, and a couple of other pockets as well. But now the data since then has been deteriorating, especially in a market like China. Do you hold on to your view that China is still a buy? And then what happens to other emerging markets like India? Good. Let me first contrast India and China, because the way I look at investing in China is different than the way I look at India. Uh, and uh, Sonia, I, I think I've told you this before a couple of weeks ago. We like India. We like Indonesia as well. These are good interesting investable stories for the next years so if i like india it's not because for the next two or three weeks or so i'm thinking 2024 and 2025 that is probably going to look pretty good as well and the earnings in india coming through very nicely indeed as well so that's a good investment story indonesia to be honest a bit the same china is different i have more of a trading view now you're right the macro numbers that have come out of china do not look good um but two things. First of all, everybody is already bearish on China. How much has the Chinese market fallen? With all the news that you see, you would think that market would be down year to date 15% or so. It's actually only down a little bit since the beginning of the year. I think it's 1% or 2% or so. So you already see that a lot of people have already sold out. Secondly, um, although the macro doesn't look good, 
the actual earnings estimate in China, and remember, if you buy equities, you buy companies, and you buy therefore the earnings of the companies. No, you can't buy GDP. It's all nice and well, but you have to look at what happens with the profitability of the companies. Now, a month ago, the market was forecasting, consensus forecast was for 25% earnings growth in China. At the moment, it's 23, still pretty good. So we've actually seen some bellwether internet names coming through with results that were either meeting expectations or doing a little bit better than expectations. So the macro picture is not good, but bottom up is not too bad. Now we have to be a bit careful here because China's in reporting season, about 50% of all the companies have reported. That means another 50% has to do so, and they will do so in the next about two weeks actually. So until the end of this month. So we'll have to see. Maybe we're going to get bigger disappointments coming through. But at the moment, the actually the underlying earnings is okay. So I take a much more trading view on, on China, but also like to highlight, despite all that bad news, the market is not down so much. Sentiment is already uh, uh, poor, and people are already positioned poorly in that market. Hi, Ralph. Uh, good morning. Nigel on this side. You know, uh, the last time I think we chatted as well, you mentioned this is going to be India's decade. So you continue to remain positive with a longer time frame for India. What do you like, though, well, from the Indian markets? I mean, any couple of sectors, any stocks, something that you could name for our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a couple of countries that could actually see a good decade. Now, a decade is 10 years' time. Uh, that's a long time, so there's a lot of things that might go wrong. But I think Indonesia uh, and India fit in there. I actually think Bangladesh could potentially fit into that particular scene as well. What do I like? Um, I'll give you a very nice story. I was in India, what is it, about five, six weeks ago, and I traveled travel through uh, Tamil Nadu, seeing temples. Fantastic place. Really good food, by the way, but that's a different story altogether. <laughs> but as we traveled, we, we drove from uh, Madurai to Tanjavur to Pondicherry and Chennai. Along the road, sometimes you go through beautiful paddy fields, and then suddenly there's a highway. And you drive for 20, 30, or sometimes 100 kilometers on the highway, and then you've got to get off again. They're constructing these highways. So the infrastructure is being put in place. Now, you fast forward uh, three years, four years, these highways will be completely constructed. And that means getting goods around the country is fantastically uh, is improved. Now, we've seen this in China. We've seen this in Indonesia. That creates a lot of growth. Your policies that the government put in place support that you have uh, the formal sector continue to gain market share of the informal sector in India. So there's a lot of growth drivers that are quite structural in nature, and the demographics will help out as well. You have challenges. You need to put that infrastructure in place, amongst others. You need to make sure that actually the growth is generated. And I think India can do a lot of other things as well. For example, education, to a certain extent, could be improved in large parts of the country. But every country's got challenges. That's why we have governments for to deal with these things, right? So I think India in the longer term looks pretty good. And actually, it's the same sort of story that is in, unfolding in Indonesia and could well unfold, for example, in Bangladesh as well. Okay, I'm keen to know what uh, you ate during that, <laughs> uh, during that entire travel. You said the food was excellent. So we'll leave that conversation for another day. But uh, you were in your... <laughs> Next time for sure. But in your report on China, you wrote about three sectors that you like, which is electric vehicles, airlines and uh, real estate companies, the state-owned real estate companies. Uh, do you extend that to a market like India as well? Uh, in a sense, maybe, yes. Um, see, the EV story to a large extent in China is that demand for EVs is pretty okay there, but there are a lot of supplies of EVs, way too many. So we're going to see a lot of EV companies in China not just struggling, I think they will go, some of them will go out of business, very simple. But the leading ones, they do very well. And we know these big brands, right? Now, these big brands, they are becoming global brands. Well, I was in, I was actually in Bangalore. I saw in Bangalore, uh, some of the Chinese EV makers having showrooms. I think in Mumbai, actually, I saw it as well. So they are moving into Europe, they're moving into uh, uh, the US, uh, they're moving into Indonesia, they're moving into India as well. So they're coming there. So in that sense, it will impact some of your markets there. But what do we like in India uh, uh, over, say, the medium term? Well, the consumer sector has actually been rather weak over the last couple of weeks. I think that's fantastic, great opportunity to get in. That's a growing sector. Good dynamics in that market. Uh, again, formal overtakes, informal, rural is growing. This, interesting trends going on. So you got jewelry makers, you got food makers, people that sell shampoo and all this sort of stuff. Uh, we like those sort of companies. Um, so I would look at consumer, 
The uh, auto industry is interesting, but we have to acknowledge that there might be increased competition, for example, from these Chinese EV makers that uh, that come in. Um, I think the banks uh, will look interesting. At the moment, of course, bond yields move high. That's good for banks. Uh, but um, uh, you have a couple of good quality private sector banks. I would like to uh, continue to have exposure to and a pullback in, in some of those stocks would be, uh, uh, I would consider that an opportunity to buy into them, absolutely. <clears throat> Harold, uh, thanks very much uh, for joining us. You've given us a glimpse into some interesting travel. Uh, so thank you for that as well. And uh, I completely agree with you. It's beautiful countryside, uh, you know, Tamil Nadu. And uh, yeah. uh, so, so, so good on you. Yeah, that, we had uh, you fantastic were time, great. As I said, the yeah. food was fantastic. So we need to come back there. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, and we'd love to host you here in Mumbai uh, as well, although the countryside, you'll have to get out a little bit to, to experience that. I mean, it's not bad here either. We'll take a very quick commercial break here. We'll uh, come back with our top list of stocks to watch. Our team will be joining in with exactly that. Stay with us.